Okay, our next writer is Tina Zaman, who needs no introduction. Tina Zaman is from Tuvalu, but lived in Japan and the Soviet Union as a child. I didn't know this, actually. Um, she was homeschooled and elsewhere. She decided she wanted to write while pursuing a master's home degree in the in University of Western Michigan. She also has an MA in creative writing from Lancaster University. Please welcome popular communist, uh, columnist. <laughs> and best-selling author of I Am Muslim, Dina Zaman. Hi. Um, my piece is going to be really short tonight. Um, it's the first draft of a short story. I've got a longer piece, <coughs> but it's got so many notes and all that. So uh, I've been reading uh, Traveling, and it's about a couple of young university kids going out to Trungano. Uh, for a whitewater rafting holiday, you know, and they're at a friend's sister's house and spending the night over before they move on to the next lake of the trip. And Akmal's a boyfriend and Sharina's the girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, now everyone's all, everyone's all asleep. Yeah? <coughs> now, Akmal called up gently. Sharina stood. Now, wake up. Mmm, she mumbled. Akmal was crouched behind the sofa, hunched and peering to see if anyone's listening or looking. He whispered again, Na! Apadila! Sharina woke up with a start. She curled up and looked around the room, blurrily rubbing her eyes. She cocked her head slightly. Sini beckoned to her. Sharina saw Akmal hiding behind the sofa. Her eyes widened. Sharina, do you think I can see your hair? What? You boleh tak buka anak tudung you kejap? Just so I can see the real you. Sharina just stared at him. Her mouth slackened and then closed. She frowned. No, go away, I want to see. Nah, she disappeared from his view. Akma stood on his knees to look at her. She was lying on the side, staring at the wall. She sighed, turned to lie on her back and folded her legs to wrap her arms around them. Akmal, give her a little. The ceiling fan gyrated, chak, 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 imitated by a lone gecko calling out for a mate. Someone muttered. The sleeping bodies exhibited total abandon, legs splayed out, an arm across a friend's face, and a knee of another's, and a knee on another's thigh. Akma racked his brains to find something to say to Sharina. Do you know that we're supposed to kill a chicha or never will hear it? Perhaps the retelling of a legend would start things off. No, why? Well, according to the story I once heard, the chicha once betrayed the prophet's hideout to his enemies. Where do you hear that from? What I heard is that one must protect the spider because he hid the prophet from his enemies and that was really the hitra. Sharina was puzzled. Yeah, but that's true. But I didn't hear this. You heard the wrong thing. No, didn't your parents tell you to kill a chicha when it's carries past you? Didn't they? She must know what I'm from. So kill it then, Sharina said. She sounded tired. For what? It's not betraying us. What do you want, Akmal? I want to see your hair. She refused. His voice grew louder. She hushed him. She rubbed the temples with her wrists. She was clearly irritated. I'll let you see the tip of my hair only. Eh, what's the use? He sat down behind the sofa. Silence. Sharina turned onto her side again and looked over her shoulder to see what was looming over. She could feel his warmth, his weight pressed against the back of the sofa. A long, tan finger caressed the bars. His other friends joined it to feel their way through between the cushions. They found her shoulder. Akmal. You makakayana. Behave. Boring, maybe. The hand warmed itself on in the back. After a moment, it slowly traveled up and found itself on a silky slope, with a light down on it. It stroked her neck and felt the coolness of her neck. It then played with the upper mo uh, most tip of a collarbone. He enjoyed touching her. 
He never thought he would get as, as close as this to a girl before marriage. She stiffened but didn't do anything. She didn't halt him tracing her closed skin. He smiled. She must be enjoying this. His fingers slid beneath her cap. It played with the elastic edge and fondled the curve at the bottom of her head and above her neck. It rubbed itself against her head it desired so much. Then it wrapped a lock of her hair, pulled it gently and massaged the chosen strand. Can't you wait till we get married? Sherina asked. What happens if we don't? He looked at her. She was biting her lower lip and rubbed her nose. Ah, she almost shouted in pain, yet managed to pull off some of her hair. He looked at the long hair it had taken. One was white and while the other three strands were black. He fingered them, feeling a coarse texture. He held on to one while the other thumb and four fingers slid up and down the hair. He tucked his treasure in his shirt pocket and went back to his part of the floor to sleep. He whispered, thank you, and heard Sharina murmur, please let me sleep, please let me sleep now. That's it. Thank you.